One jab apparently on little, little Richard Brown, but certainly his aggressiveness worked. It's suddenly four points of hot dice over the Sun Dogs, 13 to 10. You can see the face of concern on all the Sun Dog women. They are down to only five. They've got no substitutes. They're going to have to gut this one out. It's going to be iron horse time for the Sun Dog women when they come back in the third period. And now flying into the rally is Mark Weber, courtesy of Sean Marshall of the Florida Sun Dogs. And certainly Florida, as short-handed as they are, can he'll afford to let the dice build up too big a lead. Well, why is Sean Marshall out there with a jammer helmet on? It's a key example of how short-handed the Sun Dogs are, Ken. And there you see a big elbow from Mark Weber trying to regain some retribution. Weber gave up trying to jam and decided to stay back and block. Marshall, big knee so far. Marshall unable to get by Weber. Weber doing a phenomenal job. These two men, now Marshall throws him away and passes him up, pulls off the jam. Remember, Weber had not lapped the pack, so Weber picks up the one, rather Marshall picks up the one point. And Sean Marshall, big number 14, he's one of those unsung heroes here for the Florida Sun Dogs. It really has to step up if the Florida Sun Dogs are going to have a chance. 13 to 11, Nevada Hot Dice. Richard Brown doing a great job. He leads the pack. He's the last line of defense before any Sun Dog jammer could get out. And now you see Mark Weber give the big whip to Micah Martin. It's the two brothers out jamming. This is Mike and Sam Martin. We have talked about it. Richard Brown tried to give Micah the whip. Sam Martin went right underneath to gain the lead. There is absolutely no love lost. Look at Sam Martin send Micah right into the infield. Micah skates halfway around, trying to strike out his brother, sailed right on through the track. Referee wins it out. Sam Martin with a golden opportunity. Richard Brown tries to set up. Just label Sam Martin. Now Micah back up. A butt block from Micah who came back on the track. Two yellow points. Awarded to Sam Martin, deliberately attempted to impede the jammer. Very smart call by Sean Corbin. And I'm not sure what Micah Martin said to Sam Martin right there at the end of that play, but this play was Martin Mayhem as Micah Martin goes off the track almost into the stands. Sam Martin takes it at the, at the hands of little Richard Brown, and then Micah Martin comes to add a little insult to injury. But well, we all know the story. Sam Martin of the Florida Sun Dogs used to be the student to little Richard Brown when he was a Sun Dog. Now Micah Martin is the student. Well, te it's teacher and student are in the penalty box right now. I'll take him down. This is the best opportunity the Sun Dogs will have. Sean Corbin giving one jam penalties to both Micah Martin and Richard Brown. The Sun Dogs out to a five to three man advantage. 50 seconds in the jam and very quickly, Tom Smith breaks free. Now remember, if Smith can somehow lap the pack, he will get the points for the two hot dice sitting in the penalty box. But a smart move right now, they sent P.J. Rossi out. Rossi trying to cut it off and he is allowed the lead jammer, 30 seconds had expired in the jam. According to the rules, the lead jammer after 30 seconds could cut it off. A very, very heads up play by DJ Rossi. He certainly knows the rule book. And we're underway once again. Under 35 seconds to go in the period. The Sun Dogs all even now, five apiece. And now springing free from the whip is Mark Weber. Once again, this is Micah Martin along with his brother. You saw what happened two jams ago. These brothers hate each other. Sam Martin labels his brother. Down now, Micah, down. Sam, the golden opportunity. We're down to 10 seconds in the jam. He's coming up on the pack. Richard Brown laying back to block. But Sam Martin uses the speed, goes right by Richard Brown. A big block by Bill Barker. He goes by two of the hot dice. Richard Brown goes up and over. And that's the end of the period. But Sam Martin picks up two points to break the tie. 15 to 13, dogs. We're at halftime. Well, we may be at halftime, Ken, but the feud continues between Sam and Micah Martin. Micah Martin and Sam Martin. Sean Corbin's had his hands full all day. And for the Florida Sun Dogs, they may be up by two, but there's plenty of roller jam action left. Micah Martin, which is Kane and Abel, too, to say the least. 
but Lee Rearman, his mentor, Richard Brown, for lack of a better term, has taken quite a few cheap shots at Sam. Well, Ken, we have an interesting twist. We have two scenarios here. We have the teacher and the student, and then we have the inter-family rivalry with Sam and Micah Martin. Of course, everybody knows the story about little Richard Brown, formerly of the Sun Dogs. Sam Martin was his protege. Then he gets moved over to the hot dice, becomes the diabolical uh, little Richard Brown, and then Micah Martin is his protege. Well, in the second period, this all played out for us today, Ken. If we can look at what was going on, the battle between little Richard Brown, the former, actually that's Micah and Sam Martin going at it. I talked about it being a Christmas horror movie with all the red and the green going around, and at the end, the helmets are off, the green hair, the red hair. It's a nightmare as far as Christmas. We got it all, Ken. And for the Florida Sundogs on the women's side, I want to call on the expertise of Buddy Atkinson Jr. Buddy, the Florida Sundog women, they only have five skaters. They can have no substitutions in this third period. What does that do, if for nothing else, to the rotation they normally would use? Well, I'll tell you what, they got to start banging. And I mean banging hard, slowing that other team down so they can pace their play and get in this game and stay in a, in a situation where they're in control. And Buddy, let me ask you, specifically Denise Loden, obviously the quarterback of the Sundogs, can she play a normal, aggressive, physical, all-out game knowing she can take no rest? No, I think she can. She's a fine athlete, well-conditioned, and I think she can do it. She's going to be tired, but she'll pull everything out to do it. Well, there is absolutely no question the Florida Sundogs more than have their work cut out for them to try and maintain this close lead. And they'll also be looking to another Sundog, Gina Lombardo. Among the fair-haired Florida Sun Dogs, Gina Lombardo stands out from the pack. But Roller Jam fans used to seeing Lombardo take a whip might be surprised to see her use one. See these tattoos? It turns out there's more to this Florida Jammer than first meets the eye. The best thing I love is motorcycles, tattoos, and skating. Lombardo feels most at home during bike week in Daytona Beach. Are you guys ready for some corn wrestling? Say yeah! where she's the three-time cream corn wrestling champion. Lombardo brings this toughness to the track. Now this is tough. Despite her small size, she's willing to take on any challenge and any competitor. Now, one thing we are seeing from the Nevada Hot Dice this week that we haven't seen in the past is some very heads-up play, some smart execution. I think a lot of that, Buddy Atkinson Jr., is owed to the return and the coaching of little Richard Brown. But in that second period, there was almost a log jam of the entire pack, yet the Hot Dice came out of it and scored four points. If you would, Buddy, take us through that whole sequence, the log jam and the scoring. Believe it or not, Richard Brown's the one that sets this whole uh, jam up right there. He doubled, he has both of his men double team up on Barker, knocks him right down, smacking hard. Rossi does another nice set, pushes Russell right up into the hold group, and then shoots back down here with uh, his other.